Hi, welcome back to my channel, Coding with Gwen. This is going to be a short new series about the Jupyter Project. Project Jupyter is a nonprofit open source project that's 100% free to use. It's an incredibly robust ecosystem with millions of hosted notebooks online and support for over 100 programming languages now. Jupyter Notebooks allow you to place your code, documentation, any figures, tables, charts, etc. that you have all in one place and interact with it within an easy to use notebook like environment. It's a really great tool for learning, teaching and sharing programs that you create. It can be used in the browser without downloading anything or you can run it locally on your computer and use it completely offline. If you've heard of Jupyter Notebooks versus Jupyter Lab and are wondering what is the difference, Jupyter Lab is basically the upgraded web interface to Jupyter Notebooks. It adds some new features like being able to view and navigate your coding directories, among other things. The best ways to get started using it are in the browser straight from jupyter.org. You can scroll down and click on try it in your browser and then click on the one you want to try, Jupyter Lab or try a basic Jupyter Notebook with Python and it will take about a minute to load. Then you can start using it right away. A great option on your computer is to download Anaconda. Anaconda is a desktop application for you to download for free that comes with a suite of tools that are great for machine learning and data science projects. It supports Windows, Mac, and Linux and comes with Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Lab options and lots of related features and tools for those. Now Google does have a new free option that branched out of the Jupyter project ecosystem. It's called Google Colab and it runs and works almost identical to a Jupyter notebook instance. You can create and share your own notebooks for free in the Google Drive ecosystem. And you can even optionally use free GPUs for model training. Now SageMaker is an option provided by AWS that also runs Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Lab in the browser. You can use it for free for a certain amount of time by signing up for AWS's free tier, but it still may cost money while you're training your models. It might not be the best option to get started with, but it does have some great features, especially if you are already using the AWS ecosystem for your project. There are so many other things you can do with Jupyter like writing books and making full coding courses. So I encourage you to explore those more advanced options if you are interested after this course. The code I will be using in this series is Python because it is the most commonly used language with Jupyter Notebooks, but you can just as easily use something like R or JavaScript by choosing a different kernel. In the next video, let's dive in and start exploring the Jupyter Notebook interface.